Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Gaming Theatre Comp video. Let us discuss DirectX 12 a little bit, specifically for the Xbox One, but it's going to verge into the PC ter territory just a smidgen of hair, a jot, if you will. This is prompted by a recent excerpt of an interview from Confetti's CEO, Wolfgang Engel. Now, uh, the whole article isn't up yet. It's currently on doing arounds on Gaming Bolt, but it's only a snippet, so I'm going to read you guys out it in its entirety. Um, and basically, it's, as I said, focused mostly on the Xbox One. And he says, um, I like it, referring to DirectX 12. It's great, and ha it's a fantastic opportunity to raise the bar again. It works with the same piece of hardware, so it's on the same CPU and GPU. The workload on the CPU decreases substantially because you can utilize better the cores of the CPU in the way you are less likely to be CPU limited. One of the cool features of modern um, games is that we have physics. And if you've been traditionally implemented on the CPU, and as a game developer, you have to go back and ask, uh, do I want to spend 40% of my CPU time on rendering, or can I reduce that so I can use it for physics? And this could be one of the things that DirectX 12 allows. Now, moving a little bit onto Mantle, he said that Mantle is going in the same direction and has the same structural idea. Reducing CPU times, it could free up other tasks. One CPU usage case is multiple GPUs set up, which would be kind of interesting development because we have multiple GPUs, say two GPUs, that would not um, actually be CPU limited. But now using CPUs to feed two GPUs is really fast. Suddenly your GPU can become the bottleneck. So DirectX 12 and Mantle are resolving that situation. In addition to that, um, when asked of DirectX 12 versus Mantle, he said, and I quote, the advantage of Mantle is that you're able to squeeze a few more cycles out of the AMD platforms. The advantage of DirectX 12 is that it runs all on all GPUs. Now, funnily enough, uh, out of quote, this goes pretty much directly into a discussion I actually had with AMD themselves. I was speaking to Robert Halleck there, and back a couple of, well, actually, directly when uh, DirectX 12 was released, or announced, not released, announced, there was a lot of hoo-ha regarding, oh my god, Microsoft have copied AMD. And one of the primary reasons for this is that if you just looked at the very basic high level of it, as in like you just took an area photograph of what was going on with both of them, it did seem an awful lot like AMD had let's go with inspired Microsoft and AMD themselves did say that we you know we did encourage the development um, but AMD did say specifically that we don't feel they stole our technology or anything like that which was as I said going around a little bit at the time now what I'm gonna do is link my interview with AMD in the description so you guys can check that out if you so desire I'd certainly appreciate if you have a little look, because it's kind of interesting. Um, and it also goes into a few other bits and pieces as well, so if you so wish, you can have a little peek. Now, it's kind of in, uh, it's kind of off topic, but on the same subject-ish, Dan Baker from Oxide Games um, was also discussing Mantle as an API, as well as DirectX 12, a smidge as well, and this is primarily focused on PC stuff. Um, so you can either Google that, um, but I'm going to do a bit of analysis on that myself over the next couple of days. It's a fairly lengthy uh, blog post that he's uh, conducted or con concocted there, so I'm going to go through that. So let's quickly do a bit of analysis on this. For those of you who have been following Mantle, for those of you who have been following DirectX 12, it's more of a confirmation of stuff. Um, primarily speaking, CPU renderers, particularly on early DirectX hardware, uh, well, should I say earlier DirectX uh, APIs, they have a habit of putting all of the rendering on one to two threads, uh, even one thread. And so what happens is the, say for example, that thread is CPU core zero, right? Because it usually starts with zero and then one, two, three. So zero would be the first core, three would be the fourth core. It's kind of weird, but it's just how computers count. So, in those cases, what you generally have is that Core 0 will have like 100% workload, and you could have others that have like 50, 60%, whatever. 
and it's not really the way to go about things because it means effectively you've got a rendering thread that's not really being utilized as effectively as possible. Now, there's definitely a bit of confusion regarding the Xbox One and its implementation of DirectX 12, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Some have called into question how the workload is actually spread over the multiple cores that's inside the Xbox One. The Xbox One's using eight CPU cores, six are available for games there, like the low power AMD Jaguars, same this in the PS4. So there's been a lot of debate and no one's really answering it. I've spoken to Microsoft directly. They're not willing to speak about DirectX 12. They've given me a couple of examples and I've listed those on the channels pre on the channel and website previously. They're not willing to talk about it. They pretty much said, check the slides and the official website. We're not going to really say much else. Um, so unless their philosophy has changed in the last month or two, which is, I suppose, possible, they've not released any more information. I certainly have been checking up on it. So if I'm wrong, please let me know. Message me on Facebook, facebook.com slash redgamingtech, and I'd greatly appreciate it. But as far as I know, they've not really discussed that. Developers aren't really willing too much to discuss the APIs. I'm guessing because some of it is proprietary and so on. So they're not really willing to discuss it. So there is some debate how much of a boost DirectX 12 is going to make. Now, obviously, in the case of multi-GPUs, that doesn't really help the consoles. But for PCs, it does. Because running multi-GPUs specifically in some cases can actually be a bit of a detriment depending on how optimized the game is for multi-GPU setups. As it turns out, sometimes what can happen is that the rendering thread just can't really keep up. And sometimes it just sucks anyway, the game engine, you know, it just it just doesn't really work well multi-rendering, um, specifically usually bad console ports. So that's just kind of sucky. Final thing I'd like to discuss, well, I think final thing anyway, um, physics. So traditionally, they are being handled by the CPU. Now, Sony are pointing us in a direction of GP GPU. And to be fair, not just Sony, AMD, I think, would like us to go in that direction, judging by discussions they've had with both myself and just generally in the IT industry. NVIDIA definitely are. Um, NVIDIA are actually aggressively pushing GP GPU. Uh, for example, their hardware physics, same thing. So, in other words, their, their idea is to shift the work primarily onto the GPU when it comes to physics. That's not to say that none of the work is done on CPU, because pretty much what has to happen is in GPU-GPU situations, you have the situation where the CPU needs to set the job up for the GPU, because the GPU can't... Generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, the CPU sets up the job and the GPU executes it because the GPU is pretty dumb. It can't really understand the code. It basically has the CPU dispatch the job to it. So I imagine that's going to be a whole thing. There are ways to improve this and apparently NVIDIA are going to be doing that. For example, the rumors state, and once again, rumors do not indicate accuracy or fact, but the rumors indicate that there's going to be a built-in CPU, like a miniature CPU inside the GPU's die, or at least on the same board, and that's going to help to offload these kind of uh, computational requirements for GP GPU. If you have more of a burning question regarding GP GPU, as it's a fairly big topic in and of itself, I have covered this in an article and video. So what I'd recommend is if you are interested more in the compute side of things, how CPUs dispatch jobs to GPUs and parallel coding and that type of thing, it's quite a big subject and I've done part one as a video. I'd need to follow up with the rest of it if I'm totally honest, but it becomes a bit more complicated at this point. But um, I have done an article and a video of that, so I'm going to link um, them in the video description. So if you want more information on that side of things, you can, just in case you know, you're a bit curious of that. And I think that's just about it for this particular video. I prefer to do these links now, um, giving you guys information to different things, because there's a couple of reasons behind that. 
Um, one, it makes the videos shorter for people who know what they're talking about. And secondly, from my point of view, it means that I don't have to keep covering the same thing over and over again, which can kind of make me go a little bit crazy. And uh, not to mention the fact that it's just so much easier for organizational purposes. I can actually link things and tell people things. Because you'll be surprised how many people actually ask me something. And then I'm like, I, I know I covered that a couple of weeks ago. And then I realized it was part of like a bigger video. And I'm like, okay, no wonder they missed it. That's totally my fault. And it's not really the best way to serve anyone. So I figured if I link things and make things a bit smaller, it just makes things a lot easier for everyone. Let me know what you think about that idea anyway. I personally think it's a lot easier for everyone, but if you feel differently, let me know. People seem to like it so far, so that's good. If you guys like it, then I'm a happy camper. Anyway, let me know about that. Best option not to comment because I just never read comments. I generally don't. Anyway, I just don't have the time to go through all the video comments. Um, so your best bet is just to go to facebook.com slash redgamingtech. Off topic completely. I am working on the website forums and integrations. That should be over the next couple of weeks. I've got the basic website sorted, and this needs to be in a vlog, basically, but Amata has stolen my camera for Expo. So, yeah. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care, and bye for now.